I'm Tom from Do It Yourself Home Automation, and this is a look at the Fitbit Cardio Fitness Score. Um, so I'm in the main screen of my Fitbit app here. I'm going to scroll down to my heart rate information, and I'm going to go ahead and click there to bring up the heart rate data. So you can see in here you get basic metrics. Um, it shows you what your resting heart rate was for the last several days. So I'm pretty consistent around 58, 59, um, up into today so far it's been around 61. But you can see then you have this uh, ability to get a cardio fitness level and score. Uh, so I'm going to say learn more here. And it's going to walk me through what this includes. So it's looking at my overall fitness level. Um, and uh, it's looking at a couple of things. What, you know, what my heart rate is when I'm asleep. Um, what it is when I'm exercising during the day. And then it's comparing me to people of the same gender and age in order to see how my score compares to uh, the sort of benchmark standard. Um, something to make it more precise, I can use a GPS tracker on the watch. So if I have an Ionic or I have a Versa and I compare my Versa with my phone, I can track with GPS when I'm exercising and that allows them to get a much more precise look at how my heart rate is affected by uh, movement and then that allows them to presumably get a better cardio score here. Um, so let's take a look at uh, what it's gonna show me. So you, <laughs> you can see it's giving a little bit of information. It's basically estimating your VO2 max. So this is a really important exercise metric. Normally you have to do a pretty detailed test in order to find the exact number, um, but they're actually estimating it based on, again, the data I just uh, talked about. And VO2 max is the maximum, it shows here, the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use during exercise. So based on your cardio fitness, your body can put a certain amount of oxygen into your blood for your muscles, your body to use when you're exercising. And that number tends to increase as you become more fit. And that allows you to exercise harder, um, to have a higher heart rate during exercise. Um, and uh, it's just a, a good representation of your overall fitness. So, I mean, this is a little bit, it's hard to see, but you can see on the right here, on that little scale with the colors, my dot is above a 55. So I'm in the excellent range, um, but depending on your cardio fitness, your dot would fall anywhere along that scale um, for your particular age range, which for me is men 30 to 39. Um, again, you know, I'm there at the, the sort of higher end of the range, but it's saying that increasing the intensity of my exercise could increase my VO2 max by about 20%. Um, you know, that seems, that seems reasonable. My, uh, my exercise target heart rate is for max is about 183. I can definitely go higher than that as somebody of my age. So probably I can get up. It's showing me into that even higher range, but overall, you know, I'm pretty happy with seeing that I'm in the, the top part there. Um, if you're a lot lower, it's probably going to give you, uh, recommendations other than just, you know, increase your intensity for how to get that score better. Um, the fitness score is related to weight, so um, it's saying that I could lose five pounds and increase my score there. Um, you know, I, I don't want to lose muscle, and actually my, my goal is to gain weight, so I don't think that's particularly helpful for me. But if you are on the more overweight side, um, then apparently losing weight can improve that score. Um, I'd like to see, you know, a little more breakdown for a personalization on that, but uh, I think it's helpful to have that data. Um, and then it's going to give me like sort of a target of, you know, where somebody could be, uh, a marathon runner here, Ryan Hall is an 81 score. Um, and it's telling me, you know, that's his full-time job is probably has to do with genetics. Um, they're just, I guess, giving you something to strive for here. I'm not sure how helpful that is ultimately, but, um, saying that, uh, you know, he has a particularly high score. Um, what I'd like to see here that I'm not seeing is actually a specific number. You know, it's giving me the range that I'm in, but Ryan Hall's at 81. I'm somewhere above 55. I don't know what that actual number is. Um, but, you know, again, I think this is a helpful score. And I remember looking at it before, um, and I'd started an exercise routine recently, and it was lower than this. It wasn't in the top, top range. It was sort of in the, the 49 or 45 or something like that. Um, so, you know, I think it's a, it's an interesting and useful metric. I think they're probably going to break down more into this with the new Fitbit Premium service, but it is something you look at to just get a general sense of your overall uh, fitness level. And again, you really do need to log more exercise, um, use the GPS when possible, and wear the watch to sleep in order to get more accurate data here. Um, but, you know, again, these sort of breakdowns and 
more detailed metrics or something that I think Fitbit is going to do more of, especially with the new premium service. Uh, if you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps.